why is it synonymous with the majority of Americans that investing equals stocks? I look at the bigger opportunity in the small business sector because if we look at the the you know, if we just look at the multiple for a major company, like if we're buying the stock at this price, what does that mean this company's worth? A lot of times it's 20 times what its actual assets are. Mm -hmm. I can't think of a small business that people are paying that for. If we look at 96% of small businesses do less than a million of revenue. So less than a million of revenue doesn't get big multiples. It's, it's, it would be shockingly rare. A lot of times you're buying for one to three times of EBITDA which for those that don't know even it's you know earnings before interest taxes and appreciation it's just a way to calculate after certain expenses what the company's worth so we can buy that at a deep discount and there's actually more room for growth in a lot of those things because a lot of business owners as you know neglect their cash flow don't focus on their money they're doing it all through uh hard work and effort without systems and structures and so there's a massive opportunity to gain in the small business market is way more than the big businesses way more than the stocks yeah, so so let's let's go there because I think it can be easy for the average person to see this as really bad news, but there's a lot of really good news in all of this too. Like yeah. when 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 you you mentioned that there's coming, there are going to be a lot of big businesses replaced by up and coming businesses, and sometimes that can sound a little bit scary. But if we look at the last twenty years, where was Amazon 15, 20 years ago? Where was Google 15, 20 years ago? Where was Apple? 15, 20 years ago, these were emerging companies at the time. These were companies that were just a blip on the radar. And now they're trillion dollar companies. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, a trillion dollars was like saying a cabillion dollar, a cabillion billion dollar, like it, it was a yeah. number that didn't exist. Exactly. Right. And and now you have multiple companies that are worth a trillion dollars. Where where was Facebook 10 years ago? I don't even know if it was public 10 years ago. And so those who were looking at those companies are now fabulously rich because they were looking at where the world was going right. rather than where we or are what? and where we have, where right. we have been. I, I work with a, I mean, my, my business is capitalism.com. I help people start businesses, specifically physical product businesses, because that's where I've seen people get the most traction and hitting their first million in, in a year or so. There was just a case study that came out. It wasn't out of our community, but there's this company called Laird Super Creamers. Are you familiar with this company? Super creamers, uh -uh. I know. Yeah, so they're 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 a, they're a powdered coffee creamer company, okay. right? And and like it's it's big and it's actually big in our in our little circle in like the paleo health community, right? So they're I'm an company. amateur barista. I don't do powders. I just okay. Grind I, the very good. The beginning. So that's very that's good. So yeah. so this this company is does about nineteen million dollars in top line revenue. They're not and they're not profitable. Okay, so they're they're like on an, they're growing aggressively. 19 million is nothing to sneeze at, but it's it's not like their Facebook, right? They just went public and they currently have a valuation of $425 million, Garrett. Now, that's ridiculous. That's absurd. It makes no sense. And I don't care because it just shows how valued good emerging companies are, which is why I think it's the best time ever to take control of your finances by becoming an entrepreneur. Even right. little things that you start can become massively legacy changing for you and your family. And there's there's case studies like RX Bar, which was started in some guy's basement and sold for $600 million. There's Mirror, which was just a company started by a husband and his wife, and they were bought by Lululemon for $500 million in two years. There's Native Deodorant, which was started by one dude for 500. He started with $500. He sold to Procter & Gamble two years later for $100 billion. There's a bunch of these case studies. And so there's plenty of good news happening while the structure of everything is fractured. Well, and the other good news you mentioned low interest rates is for the for the, the down payment on a home, you can acquire a business. And with the interest rates the way they are today, the majority of those that you would buy can cash flow from day one. Now, you have to get knowledge about it. You have to know what you're doing with it. You have to great gain a skill set. But look, if people can go through school and learn math and science, they can learn business. Business is in some ways easier. In other ways, there's people and emotions involved, which makes it complicated. But, you know, you've done it over and over, Ryan. So, you know, you've got a formula. You understand how it works. And, and I just think that that's the news. The news is we've been trained, taught, and educated to wait for 30 years, hoping compound interest will save us. 95% of the mm. time, people are not financially independent at age 65. So compound interest isn't the miracle it's purported to be. What is the miracle is cash flow 
and having entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship comes with a lot of tax advantages and a lot of influence that you can do to have some degree of control over the outcome versus just hoping that it all works out. And so I, I think that we, we it's a time for entrepreneurs to rise because we have so many businesses coming onto the market and there's so many things that can still be created or invented or, or dialed in. And Ryan, dude, when we were, when we were little babies, you and I were little babies, think about how much it took for someone to start a business versus now the tools and infrastructure that exist that are near free or very inexpensive to help you to do something like that. I have someone that's a client that two years ago started a business on Amazon, struggling, 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 does a call with my team. They're exiting for three and a half million. Dude, nice. They weren't even, I was just like, wow. Like I'm, and then they're like, Hey, do you want one of these things for free? I, thanks for all your help. And I was like, dude, it's crazy. Cause I, you know, it's just amazing how short of a turnaround that was. And it was a, a mom that just was now, okay, my kids are out of the house. What am I going to do and start a business? And within three years from the time it was started is selling it for three and a half million dollars. I mean, that's pretty phenomenal. Like that's an exciting time to be alive. The bad news is we can't just sit around and hope someone's going to come save us because government can't save you. Amen. Corporations won't save you and effort isn't enough. It's time to leverage intelligence and add more value and entrepreneurship to beautiful vehicles. Want to continue the path to be a better investor? Make sure that you're not losing money and taking too much risk? Well, click here and learn about strengths vesting.